Nepal, meanwhile, has been rubbing India the wrong way. Kathmandu published a new map on the 20th of May depicting the disputed areas of Lipu Lake as part of Nepal. A bill is now in the Nepalese parliament to update the country's existing map. Why is Nepal, a country that is highly dependent on India, trying to create a dispute with New Delhi? Is China behind all of this? Most likely. The dispute comes at a time when India is engaged in a border standoff with China. But why is Nepal playing party to the dragon? To discuss this, I'm joined by Dr. Minendra Rijal. He's a former minister of Nepal, a sitting member of the country's parliament, a member of Nepal's main opposition party, the, ne the Nepalese Congress. Uh, Dr. Rijal joining us live from Kathmandu. Good evening and welcome to Gravitas. My first question to you is what prompted Nepal to take an extreme position of suddenly changing the map? The disputed area has been a subject of discussion for a while now, so why this? We have not taken an extreme position. We've been saying this since 1997, when uh, your Prime Minister, uh, Right Honorable Inder Kumar Guzralzi, uh, visited Nepal at that time. We uh, uh, did present some of some of our evidences and then said, uh, "These uh, this area belongs to Nepal, and this should be uh, so. Uh, this is something that should be taken into account, and then uh, resolution has to be found. And then consistently since then." Uh, especially after uh, 2000 AD, uh, this has been 20 years now. Uh, at the prime minister's level, we raised this also, and uh, both sides have agreed that this is an outstanding issue that has to be resolved uh, diplomatically. Diplomatic means has to be found. Not just one side blaming the other side, and other side just looking at it and then doing nothing. So, I mean, there's enough blame to go around. I mean, if you, if you start blaming each other, uh, we are not going to get anywhere. That is right. The blame game will not get anyone anywhere. Are you going to tell this to your own prime minister, though? I, I'm going to say this to you, to uh, people of India, uh, to the authorities in India. And of course, uh, I would also advise my government, uh, uh, political parties here, that uh, we have to be uh, more restrained in the, in the conduct of the foreign policy. This, this has been, I said, an outstanding issue. But... But there is talk of Chinese influence, open interference by the Chinese in this dispute. India and China fought a war in 1962, right? They, they, were, they are very good friends today. So the relationship between India and China has changed. Similarly, the relationship of, between Nepal and China and tripartite relationship. Nepal, India, China also has evolved over the period of time. So, I mean, if you do not uh, understand uh, that China has a role to play in Nepal, uh, maybe uh, in terms of magnitude smaller than uh, the role India plays. But if you do not recognize it, it will be uh, probably ignoring a fact that has evolved over a period of time. I'm not ignoring the fact at all. In fact, playing a role is one thing, but China's open interference in Nepal's domestic politics is quite another. So I guess, I mean, this probably would augur well to Indian audience, showing that, uh, showing the Chinese car and saying that Nepal is enormously influenced by China. This is unacceptable to us. That probably uh, augurs well with the Indian audience. I mean, Indian audience probably would like to hear that. And then probably uh, there is no other way how India, uh, policymakers in India can justify some of the things they have done vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis their relation, relationship with Nepal. I mean, I, I, we are a small nation. We are a small economy. But you cannot blame us for your failings. Right. Just like Nepal cannot blame India for a virus that actually came from China. Fully agree, madam. I agree with that. I think, I mean, uh, this could have been done in a very different way, where in a very nice fashion. I mean, uh, I, I guess... Uh, uh, there may be very few countries in the world whose relationship is as close as that of uh, Nepal and India. We all know that. Nepalese do know that. Uh, but uh, when Nepal Nepali people hear that Indian people at the policy level kind of feel that they can make policy for Nepal, they can decide for Nepal, they know uh, what's in the best interest of Nepal, and then uh, Nepal should heed to their, 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 their suggestion and judgment. And that, that creates a... Uh, 
very bad uh, environment. I'm sure. Why doesn't it create a bad environment when China says that Mount Everest is there, sir? Every report that comes out in today's world, we cannot go and contradict that. I mean, had Chinese government said anything, then probably I mean, this would have been an issue that two nations would have to attend to. Otherwise, the boundary issue with China is pretty clear. Right. Let me quote from another report then. People are not happy with Prime Minister K.P. Oli's handling of the coronavirus situation. This Lipu Lake issue is clearly uh, your Prime Minister's political lifeline. Why is your party, an opposition party, the Nepali Congress, helping him in that? That sounds like a very good narrative to sell to Indian audience. But I mean, <laughs> I, I would not comment beyond that. I mean, uh, I do not have any reason not to defend uh, Mr. Oli's handling of internal affairs. Uh, I am with the Prime Minister as far as conduct of the foreign policy is concerned on the internal uh, issue, internal handling of uh, uh, Nepal's economy, Nepal's politics, Nepal's uh, law and order. I mean, I have, I have a thousand differences with him. Right. Uh, the founder of modern Nepal, Prithvi Narayan Shah, described Nepal as the yam between uh, the two rocks, the two boulders. Do you feel like that yam today? Is this even more relevant today than before? Is the yam being squashed? Some mindset still there, but we are also evolving. I mean, now we, from landlocked to we are thinking of a uh, land-linked country. So uh, one third of the world GDP will be produced in between India and China in uh, a few years to come. It's almost almost uh, anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of the world GDP is produced uh, between India and China. And we know, I mean, this is a tremendous opportunity. We know there is a lot of interest in Nepal among many other countries throughout the world. That's because of the importance China and India have on the international arena, global arena. We want to benefit from that. So we don't, uh, the psychology of um, yam between two bowlers should not be there. We, uh, we would, I would more like, more like, Thing, I would like to think more like being linked with the two of the most vibrant, dynamic, uh, fastest growing economy in the economies in the world. And let's get, uh, let's try to get the best benefit out of it. Well, for that, I guess the Nepali Prime Minister will have to fix his line a bit. That was Dr. Minendra Rijal, a member of Nepal's Parliament, a member of Nepal's Opposition Party, joining us from Kathmandu. Thank you.